Whether you're just getting started with eating more plant-based foods in your diet or you've been practicing it for years, plant-based cooking can be very different than traditional cooking methods. Since so much of my nutrition philosophy is around eating plant-based foods and abundant and plant-based whole foods, I've learned a few hacks that you can use to navigate plant-based cooking with ease to make sure that each meal is equally delicious as it is nutritious. In this video, I'm sharing nine simple cooking hacks for preparing plant-based meals that will help you make your meals really tasty, nutritious, and also, of course, easy for you to make. So before we jump in, I know so many of you have already started eating more plant-based foods, which I'm really excited about. And I would love to know what your best tip is for cooking plant-based meals is. So share with me and the community below so that everybody can get inspired and then we'll dive right in. Hey there, I'm Mikkel Kuinga, registered dietitian, founder of Nutrition Stripped, and creator of The Method Membership. And I'm really excited that you're here. I make eating more plant-based whole foods easier, more mindful, and enjoyable on a daily basis. I absolutely love cooking and I love playing around in the kitchen and I also believe cooking is such a beautiful art form and it's a really important part of being able to create healthy eating habits for life. I even have an entire section in my method program dedicated to teaching members all about these cooking hacks, how to be a great home cook so that they enjoy cooking experience from the start to the finish. So tip number one is to do all of your cooking, slicing, and dicing ahead of time. If you're planning on cooking something the day of rather than let's say doing a mini or a full meal prep session on the weekend, you may have a meal prep day for all of the chopping, slicing, and dicing so it's ready, it's easy to grab and go instead of needing to do all of the chopping and the prep the day of. So with salad greens, for example, I love having a big container of lettuce that's already washed cut, stored, a little bit dried in an airtight container. And it just removes that extra little step so that when I go make a foundational five nourish meal, it's ready to go. So the same thing applies to kale, carrots, Brussels sprouts, you name it. Pat them a little dry, store them in a glass container until you're ready to cook them. Tip number two is to cook your vegetables based on their category. Now this is a fun one. This will allow you to batch cook a lot of your vegetables at the same time, same temperature, same size, but it'll help you also make sure that they finish at the same time. So for example, if you roast different vegetables at the same time, put one category of vegetables per pan so that you can take them out at the same time. And the cooking length will depend on that vegetable and then they're ready to go and all of your other veggies that might take longer can stay in the oven. If you're not familiar with the different categories of vegetables, here are a few. First, we have root vegetables. These are like your beets, your potatoes, radishes, carrots, turnips. Then we have leafy greens, like the obvious kale, spinach, collard greens. We also have cruciferous veggies, which are great for us. Broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. And then another category is like our fruit vegetables. So technically avocado, eggplant, and pumpkin. And then also gourds and squashes are kind of a category of themselves, like butternut squash, acorn squash. There's also mushrooms like portobello mushrooms, shiitake, white mushrooms, and they're not technically vegetables because they're a fungus or they're in the fungus family, but I'm kind of grouping them in here. Now, another category is stock vegetables. These are your celery, your fennel, and rhubarb. Lastly, we have pod and seed vegetables like green beans, peas, snow peas. So the next time you're batch cooking and you're looking to cut down a little bit on your cooking time, this is such a great hack. And the next hack for you to do is to soak beans and legumes. Soaking helps reduce the amount of time it takes to actually cook beans and legumes. And it's so easy to do. Second, they tend to taste a little bit better after gone through some of the soaking period. Your dishes where you use beans and legumes might have a stronger, more robust earthy flavor. 
Third, they are much easier for your body to digest. And more specifically, soaking your beans can allow for a significant reduction in gas production as a result of bean consumption. So that's always a nice little added bonus here. And so if you're one of those people that often gets a bit gassy after you eat canned beans, a really quick tip here is to try making your own by soaking them from the dried bean. Now to soak your beans, it's really easy. You just cover them with a couple inches of filtered water in a bowl with a bit uh, baking soda you can even put a little tiny bit of salt in there the baking soda helps break them down and just let them sit for overnight preferably if you if you're able to at least four to six hours and once they're done soaking strain your beans get rid of all the water and then you're ready to cook Tip number four is specifically for improving the texture of organic tofu. Organic tofu is incredibly versatile. It's really popular as a plant-based protein. It contains all of the amino acids. It also has a little bit of fiber, a little bit of healthy fat on top of the protein. And one serving can offer up about 20 grams of protein. It's super versatile. It soaks up all of the surrounding flavors in the dishes that you're making. If you don't like the soft, spongy texture of organic tofu, then try this hack. Freeze it in its container with the liquid and then thaw it. So after thawing, you'll cut it into three sections and put it onto a cutting board with a paper towel layered above and below. And then just place a heavy object on top, like a skillet, so that the, the water drains from that tofu, leaving it really nice and dry. You can keep it like that for at least an hour for best results and try to change out the towels every 30 minutes or so because they will collect a lot of water. The combination of freezing it and then the press method really gives it that texture that's more consistent with like chicken or ground beef that you might be familiar with. Now, even if you like the original texture of tofu, this is just another fun way to give it a different texture and so that you can experience something new. Number five, learn how to blanch to give your vegetables a little nice crunch and also help your produce last longer. So if you enjoy a little crunch in your veggies, blanching is one of those basic cooking techniques to make them really nice and crisp and also tender at the same time. It's also one of the easiest ways to preserve food. So blanching is the way to go. With this method, basically all you do is you submerge the veggies in a boiling pot of water for about five to seven minutes given the vegetable. Then you stop the cooking process immediately by putting them in an ice bath. This technique allows you to maintain the vegetables bright, beautiful colors and help retain some of their nutrients and also get that snap. Fill a large pot of water, add a tablespoon of sea salt, bring it to a boil. You're going to add in the vegetables into a pot, allow them to cook for again a few minutes until their colors are really nice and bright and then immediately remove them and put them in that ice bath. That will stop the cooking process immediately. My next hack for you is to play around with the serving temperature. So most of our plant-based whole foods can be served both hot or cold, sometimes even room temperature. You may have heard me share this tip before because I love it so much and so many people never even think about it. So for example, you may be used to having some quinoa or cooked quinoa or cooked chickpeas and adding it into a warm nourish bowl, which is so delicious, but chickpeas also taste delicious served cold too. You can make a chickpea salad, you can roast them and get them nice and crunchy for salads. And the same goes with potatoes, with broccoli, with gluten-free pasta, along with so many other foods that we're just used to eating hot. They can all be dressed up differently and served cold too, which is really delicious and easy on the go. And on the other hand, foods that you're used to serving cold, like strawberries or blueberries or apricots, taste so different and still just as delicious when they're served hot in a porridge or in a dessert. Another example of this is with salads. Many salads are served cold, most of them are, but warm grain salads are just as tasty. So after this video, head to my website, nutritionstrip.com, where I have hundreds of plant-based gluten-free recipes that you can try. Another great hack is to make leftovers and store them as your own healthy freezer meals, right? This is such a great tip. Even if you have your weeknight cooking down, there's inevitably going to be a time where you're going to be busier than normal or you're off your schedule, off your routine. So this is such a great time to have that 911 meal ready to go. 
When you're making a recipe that's a full meal, like my tofu tiki masala or white bean chili verde, just make a double batch knowing that you're going to freeze half of it. And then you'll have a nutritious meal that you can easily put out. You can have this prepared meal. It'll be ready to go for your week instead of running out to get a quick takeout, quick service restaurant, or stress out about what you're going to eat. Hack number eight is to cook your grains in vegetable broth. This is actually a double hack. First, you can save your veggie scraps from the week and you can cook them into a really beautiful homemade vegetable stock. It's all about reusing what you have. It allows you to make the most out of each piece of produce that you buy, so we're reducing the food waste. And by cooking the grains in vegetable broth, you're also elevating the flavor and you're adding more nutrients to your dish, so it's a win-win. On to the final hack, which is super important for plant-based eating. Any time that you're making a dish that's loaded with greens, like kale or spinach or romaine lettuce or any type of collard, squeeze a little lemon to brighten the flavor, add some vitamin C, which helps our body absorb non-heme iron. Again, that's the iron that's found in plant-based foods like greens. And if you're eating a plant-based diet, iron is one of those nutrients that you need to really be mindful and intentional about getting enough of. So this is a great visual cue for yourself, greens and citrus for a winning combination of iron and vitamin C. So now you have nine great hacks to use when you are preparing your plant-based meals. So let me know which one of these that you're most excited about and which one that you're going to practice this week. Then look for the link around this video so that you can download my free guide that teaches you more tips, more practices, also healthy recipes that can help you create healthy eating habits for life. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this every single week and also watch my other videos linked here. And these will all help you create healthy eating habits that work for you 365 days a year. I hope that you have a beautiful day and remember health is a daily practice.